my total taxes paid, payroll taxes plus income tax. Um, mine came to 17.7%. Uh, the average for the office was 32.9%. There wasn't anybody in the office from the receptionist on up that paid as low a tax rate. And I have no tax planning. I don't have an, I don't have an accountant. I don't have tax shelters. I just follow what the U.S. Congress tells me to do. A new report out today shows that Warren Buffett is not alone in scoring a way sweeter deal on his taxes than, say, his receptionist. At least 30 Fortune 500 companies paid zero taxes or less for the last three years. So, or less means sometimes the government pays them. Over those three years, those 30 Fortune 500 companies made $160 billion in profit, but they still paid zero federal income tax, or even less than zero. If you paid anything in federal income taxes over the last three years, you personally, as an individual human, paid more federal income tax than Wells Fargo, General Electric, hi boss, Verizon, Boeing, DuPont, Duke Energy, PG&E, also, that we energy company that dumped this crap into Lake Michigan this week, you paid more than all of those companies combined. So if Wells Fargo was considering turning itself into you, one of the downsides for Wells Fargo of doing that would be that you actually pay more income tax than they do as a company. But today at the G20, another zillionaire took your side in this anyway. Uh, Bill Gates today urging the world's 20 major economies to support the popular idea of a financial transaction tax. We used to have one of these in this country from 1914 to the mid-60s. Then they repealed it. The basic idea is a very, very small tax, something like a quarter of a percent on financial trades. National Nurses United marched today in Washington in support of a financial transaction tax. Democrats Tom Harkin of Iowa and Representative Peter DeFazio of Oregon have introduced a bill that would reinstate the financial transaction tax in this country. Worldwide, the idea of doing this globally in all financial markets is getting vocal support from the Archbishop of Canterbury today, uh, from the Pope who put out an official Catholic Church statement on this last week. Also, conservative German Chancellor Angela Merkel and the conservative French President Nicolas Sarkozy. President Obama talked with Merkel and Sarkozy today about possible bank fees or taxes. And in his book, Confidence Men, and here last night in an interview on this show, author Ron Suskind reports that President Obama at least used to personally support this idea of there being a financial transaction tax. But members of his economic team, specifically Lawrence Summers, apparently strongly pushed against it, and we didn't get one. Well, now Lawrence Summers is gone from the administration, but still, as of today at least, the U.S. officially does not support a global financial transaction tax, even though our allies France and Germany do, not to mention the Pope. We often hear a critique of the Occupy Wall Street movement that it's not specific enough, that nobody knows what the demands are. Well, here's one. Here's a very specific demand from everybody from the Pope to American nurses to Bill Gates to the German Chancellor. Doesn't that sort of seem doable? Michael Moore is still here with us tonight for the interview. Michael, thank you for sticking around. Yes, it's thank you. It's doable. It, yes, it does seem doable, It's very easy to right? do. It's, and it's so simple. It's, it's, it's not all everybody trying to get their claws into the rich. It's just a half a penny or a quarter of a penny per dollar that's traded on the stock market or for these derivatives that they're still selling or these credit default swaps that they're still messing around with. Every time they do this, just a half a penny or a quarter penny goes to the government. This would raise in the United States a minimum of $350 billion a year of extra income. Uh, add that on to the $2 billion a week that we're still spending on the wars. If we could bring the troops home and end that, that's another $100 billion a year. 450 extra billion dollars would go a long way uh, to help things here. And, I, and there's, there's no reason that that just can't be introduced now. And I'm frankly, the Democrats should do it. And they should push it. And, and if the Republicans can't get a, go along with this, then, then let them try and run on that. That this wasn't a tax on Mr. and Mrs. America. This is a, this is a half a penny, half a penny per dollar that's being traded that used to be taxed, uh, that isn't taxed any longer, and it hurts this country. One of the reasons I wanted to talk to you about this, um, Michael, is I, I know not only that you've been do visiting so many of the Occupy protests, but also because I know that you think strategically about how, how America changes on things that we're not supposed to be able to change about. And I wonder how you feel about this issue of the, the, the specificity of what the Occupy protesters 
are asking for. The agenda that we were talking about just a few minutes ago is a very broad but simple agenda that systems should work for not just the rich. But then there's something like calling for that tax, which couldn't be more specific. Do you think that the, the specificity or the generality of the goals helps in terms of people understanding it? Does it make it more complicated? Yes, no, and I think that there's a lot of people out there that are who support Occupy Wall Street and are just waiting for, okay, what's the marching orders here? What are we, what are we gonna get behind? And a lot of the General Assemblies have already passed resolutions saying that we need to reinstitute Glass-Steagall, uh, that we need to get rid of the Bush tax cuts for the rich, um, that you know, there's, there's, there's quite a program that's coming together. This is one of those things that's so easy, just as, just as they, we also need <clears throat> to tax uh, every if, if if there are FICA tax, Social Security tax is around seven percent, but that but the wealthy after one hundred and ten thousand dollars pay zero Social Security tax, zero FICA tax. That they they, it, it, I mean literally, and you've covered this on your show. I mean this is just another simple idea. If you're making forty thousand a year, they're taking seven percent out of your out of your check for this tax, but the wealthy person. It has zero percent taken out if they make over one hundred and ten thousand dollars, and that's just—it's such a simple idea. And I think the majority of the country would be behind it. Obama said he was behind it at one time, and I think what we need with this movement is we need to keep things broad and keep the discussion going. At the same time, we're going to start focusing on some specific things, and and we need to push Congress and the president. We're not going away. This movement is only going to get bigger. You can see by the polls, it just gets more support each week. And, um, and I think that, uh, you know, just give the movement a, a few more weeks. It's only six weeks old, and it already has the support of, of tens of millions of Americans, which is unheard of for a brand new movement in this country. That usually takes decades. So Occupy Wall Street has it already. Um, now the next steps will take place. And I got to tell you, I hope I'm not being Pollyanna here, but I'm just very optimistic that um, some good things are going to come out of this. But there's, there's going to be pushback from Congress and from these corporations, but it's too late. They overplayed their hand. They got too greedy. The people aren't going away. Six weeks old and already talking. It's the way I like to think of it. Uh, Michael Moore, right. filmmaker and author of the new book, Here Comes Trouble, <laughs> Stories from My Life. Michael, thank you so much for making time to talk to us tonight. Really appreciate it, my friend. Thank you so much. And everyone in Denver thanks you too, right. Rachel. Thanks, Thank man. you. All right, we will be right back.